What's up guys, I'm BTC, welcome back to The Respawn, a weekly series where I answer your questions. Let's get started. First, why is Blizzard refusing to give buffs to Soldier, Ash, Bastion, Torb, and other characters that need it? I honestly don't know. This is genuinely frustrating. Okay, I know that as just players, it is really frustrating for you guys when you look at some of the balance changes and you must be thinking like what what are they what are they what are these guys doing hey, what are they thinking but for me there's kind of like a little extra level on top of that because yeah i play the game but i also make content for the game i also have to deliver the news to you guys right so when i have to talk about a new balance change new patches and stuff and i look at the and i like it oh it can just be so frustrating sometimes I don't know why they're doing some of the things that they're doing. I can give you a little bit of insight though, because Jeff Kaplan and some of the other Overwatch devs genuinely, sincerely believe that the game is almost entirely balanced. That it's pretty much as good as it needs to be, and that any other changes are just like minor things. That is a problem. That is a problem to anyone with eyes. Anyone that has even played the game knows that isn't true. And yeah, again, for just everybody else who's playing the game, it's frustrating. And for me, it's even more frustrating, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I try to make content that has like rework ideas and other suggestions to try to fix the game. It's really this almost this kind of feeling of powerlessness where it's like, you see something happening in slow motion and it's just not working and you know it's gonna be really bad and it's like hold on hold on like I can just kind of help you out here but you know you really can't do that and it, yeah it, it's I don't I don't know why I don't know why I would absolutely love to be able to sit down with the devs for a couple minutes and say what are you doing because I don't get it Next up, do you think they will ever remove a hero? No, absolutely not. However, we have heard from the developers in the past where they have actually addressed this particular thing, where they said that they would not remove characters from the game, but it is possible that characters could at some point die in the story. So whether it's a comic or an animation or possibly in the Overwatch 2 campaign, it is possible that some character could meet an untimely fate, but that doesn't mean that you're going to lose the character in competitive play or just in regular gameplay or whatever, right? Like, that character is still going to be there, you can still use it, but according to the story, that character has, you know, passed away. Now, I do actually think that this will happen during the Overwatch 2 campaign. I think that the character that I know who it's, I'm pretty certain I know who it's going to be. I, I kind of don't want to give away anything right now, but I'm pretty certain I know who it's going to be and why that character is going to be taken out and who would replace that character because, well, all you really need to know is the writers of Overwatch. You just kind of need to know what their, shall we say, motivations are. And then it becomes pretty transparent on what they're trying to do. So, yeah. I don't think it's going to be good. And I think it's probably... If, if it does happen, it's going to be for dumb reasons. But, yeah, I, I think they could absolutely kind of, you know, make a character die off in the, in the story. But as for removing it from the game, no. I, I don't see that happening. Next up, what happened to Roadhog's rework? The other day I made a video talking about some potential role queue changes and also moving Roadhog into the DPS category. If you were to go to Blizzard Studios and play Roadhog right now, he would be in the DPS category with a bunch less health, his take a breather doesn't have damage resistance, and I think they changed some of his attacks as well. But he would be in the DPS category. And this is because for the last several months at Blizzard, they've been testing a new version of role queue, which is one tank, three DPS, and two supports. Now, this isn't something that they're planning on moving to the PTR anytime soon, and it seems like they're still very much on the fence kind of making these changes. Now, if they do change the role queue system this way, it is possible 
that Roadhog could be moved into the DPS category. However, another possibility that Jeff Kaplan spoke about a little bit was turning Roadhog into something more of a main tank, which would probably mean, again, a different kind of rework rather than just making him into you know DPS and lowering his health and stuff like that. They would have to give him some sort of abilities that allow him to actually protect his team or to reduce damage, and there's a variety of things that they could do. I've talked about this where they could have a bodyguard feature where... He puts it on a particular teammate and he then absorbs a certain percentage of the damage that your teammate is taking. So it would kind of function like a lifelink. There's other things where he could have an area effect damage resistance where anybody that's kind of near him takes 10% or 20% less damage or something like that. There's a lot of variety that they could do. But as of right now, all of that is just in early experimental phases and whether or not Roadhog does get a rework, we're not going to know for probably quite a while. Next up, what is your thought on a character that can build stairs and new walls? Someone's been playing Fortnite. Actually, this was a pretty common suggestion after Fortnite was released. I don't think it's a good idea. There's already a lot of stuff in game that blocks attacks. And now that we've had the barriers nerfed, people can actually start dealing damage again. I don't think it's a good idea to add more physical objects that will then block the attacks. Now, there are a bunch of different things you could do to give a similar function to your teammates. So for example, if you wanted to have your teammates get onto high ground, you don't need to build stairs. You could just have some sort of buff that you can put on a teammate. It lets them jump you know, twice as high, three times as high or something like that. You could have like a little area on the ground that lets people jump extra high. You could do a bunch of different things. One of the things that I did for one of my hero concepts, Jules, is she has this super jump, but she also has the ability to create a hard light platform underneath her. She works for Vishkar. So there's a lot of hard light stuff going on with the character, and that platform is one of them. So what you could do is you could jump across an area or jump into the middle. Like, let's say you're going from point A on Hanamura over to point B. You go around that left side. You could have Jules jump over, create a platform, and then jump again. And then the rest of the team could jump on the platform and cross as well. Now, if you needed to get to high ground, then you could just do a normal jump, put the platform, and then the rest of the team could use it as kind of like a stepping stone to get up on top onto higher ground and stuff like that. Now, the way that this works is it is considered a physical object, but because it's just a platform, it's so thin, it's not actually going to stop any from attacking you, right? Like if you're underneath the platform, then yeah, you can't attack. But for the most part, it's going to be a horizontal thing. And then what's going to happen is you can still attack above it or below it. And if you get close to it and you're the enemy, you can just jump on top of it. So it's not really going to block anything. It provides that kind of verticality to your teammates that you're kind of looking for by adding stairs without preventing the enemy or even your team from being able to attack each other. So I think if you wanted to do something, that would be a better option than putting in stairs or walls or anything that is actually going to block the attacks. Next up, does jumping actually change how fast you move? In the overwhelming majority of cases, no, it doesn't. However, there are some situations where it doesn't really increase your speed or reduce your speed, but what it does is it will conserve your speed. So, for example, if you're using Moira and you fade, if you jump at the last second before you leave the fade, then you will conserve the speed that you had during the fade itself and you will continue moving forward at that speed until the next time you hit the ground. So you're moving at that increased speed, you jump, you keep that speed, and then you hit the ground. And it works the same way with Brigitte's Shield Bash, Doomfist's Rocket Punch. It also works in reverse. So if you're running at a normal speed with Reinhardt and then you jump and open your shield, you don't get that movement penalty until the next time you hit the ground. So for the vast majority of situations, just running and jumping around is not going to change your speed, but you can use it to do these little tricks that kind of help you move a little bit further, a little bit faster if you're using it at the right time. 
Next up, do you have any experience in creating or developing a game? On a professional level, no. On an amateur level, yes, and I was quite successful at it. Funny story, I've been trying to make video games ever since I was a kid, like five or six years old. I would make replicas of the instruction booklets from Nintendo games, because back then you would get the game and there was this big booklet and it would have all the stuff about the game. You know, we don't get that sort of stuff anymore because everything's digital. I would recreate these booklets and I would include characters, abilities, movement controls, level design, all of that stuff. And I would even recreate the official Nintendo seal and put it into the booklet, and then I mailed them off to Nintendo Power, saying, hey, can you make these games? Now, obviously I was a kid, and they would send a letter back and say, well, thank you for the suggestions, we'll keep this stuff in mind, blah, 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 you know, all that sort of stuff. I mean, obviously they knew they were responding to a kid, so it's not like they were actually gonna do it, but it was still kind of cool, and I was doing that even at a young age. And then when Minecraft came out, I thought, hey, you know what? This is actually a way for me to start making some of the adventure games. And the first one that I made was Kingdom of the Sky. And it's an adventure map that is kind of similar to Legend of Zelda in style and Dark Souls in difficulty. So it was a really fun adventure map and it was downloaded and played hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times. It's one of the highest rated Minecraft custom adventure maps ever made. I also made a sequel which was incredibly popular and a whole bunch of other smaller maps that had pretty good success as well. All in all, my maps have probably been downloaded and played over a million times, which would be really successful if that was an indie dev. And on top of that, I also created my own custom map build team and we made a bunch of maps that were put on a variety of the Minecraft servers and some other stuff and that had some pretty good success as well. Uh, but eventually I ended up moving over to Overwatch and stuff and kind of moved away from the whole Minecraft thing. But if that was an indie studio, then yeah, I would have had quite a bit of success. So that's why one of the things that I'm really looking forward to in Overwatch is the ability to make maps. If they put out a map tool, I think I could probably do some pretty cool stuff with it. Hashtag Blizzard hire BTC. Next up, do you think a spread buff to Soldier would work? I don't think that would fix any of the major issues the character has. He just gets massively outclassed by other heroes with a similar role. Hanzo and Widow can one hit him, McCree and Ash can two hit him. He just requires a lot more attacks to do the same thing, so he's not really an effective duelist. And then when it comes to being countered, you have stuff like D.Va, Winston, Hammond, Doomfist, and Tracer, who can all close the distance on him very quickly and start dealing damage, and there's really not a whole lot that Soldier can do. On top of that, his sprint isn't really a true escape tool. It's more of a relocation tool, right? It's not like it's a grapple where you can just use it and quickly get away from the enemy. Yes, you move a little bit faster, but a lot of those characters that are going to be chasing after him are still going to be able to catch up again. And also, it doesn't have any vertical mobility whatsoever, so he just gets massively outclassed. I'm not really sure what they could do. The concern would be if you raise his damage, then he's just going to be too good. So, I don't know. Maybe they might have to change some other stuff. I'm not really sure, but a spread buff is not really going to do a whole lot. Next up, what are the books that you're writing about? I mentioned this in a previous video. Someone asked what kind of stuff that I'm doing besides YouTube. And one of those things is writing a whole bunch of different stories. I probably have between 12 and 15 different stories in various stages of development. Some are just really simple concepts. Others have been pretty thoroughly developed with backgrounds and stories and characters and lots of different plot points and stuff like that. One of them is pretty heavily kind of developed right now. I have tons and tons of stuff, different example materials. I use a program called Scrivener and I have lots of different character bios and stuff. I've got a whole bunch of cork boards in my room with note cards and character points and, and sheets and all sorts of stuff like that. I've got tons and tons of stuff. And it actually just, just last night, I got another idea for a story and I recorded that on my phone and I'll end up moving it over into one of my files later on. But the stories that I'm writing are a bunch of different genres. The main really big one that I'm writing is Grim Dark, which is similar to what you would see in Game of Thrones, where 
it's fantasy, but there's a little bit more realism to him. It's a little bit more gritty, that sort of thing. Another story that I'm writing is Lovecraftian, sort of. And then others are just a mix of maybe fantasy, sci-fi. There's one that is more kind of like a, a spy sort of thing. It's, it's like a... It's hard to explain without giving away like plot points and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff. I don't know if I'm ever going to end up publishing this stuff. I just need to find more time to just sit down and write this stuff. Hopefully, at some point, I'm able to get at least one or two of these out there. That is going to be all the questions for this week. Thank you to everyone who submitted one. Remember, I post the question card on the community tab of my YouTube channel. A brand new card has been posted just now, so you can go and leave your question for next week. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell to get notified. You can get some cool gear, join my Discord server, or follow me on social media with the links down in the description below. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, and remember, always, always blame the controller, because it's never your fault.